Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Chris from Pain and Glory, and we are here to start a new project with three things that are very near and dear to my heart. Pendragon miniatures, 10 millimeter, and World War I. Specifically, we are looking at World War I Russians, and if you can see back here, a little bit of RCW, Russian Civil War. Now, this is every single figure from the Pendragon uh, World War I Russian and Russian Civil War line. I am painting them up for Leon over at Pendragon so we can have some nice photos of these minis so you can see what you are buying and they are beautiful. These are some fantastic talent 10 millimeter sculpts for World War I. Now, if you don't have a lot of experience with 10 millimeter, here is a 28 millimeter figure in metal. It is a French World War I figure. For comparison, here's some Flames of War plastics, US paratroopers in 15 millimeter, about half the size of the 28 millimeter. And then here, in all of their 10 millimeter glory, is a Russian soldier about two thirds the size of these 15 millimeter. Do they have quite as much detail? No, but that's not the point of 10 millimeter. They help you paint them up faster because there is less detail and they are smaller, but they still have a lot more detail, I find, than six millimeter figures. You can still make a lot of the details down to the rifle. You can see the rifle sling, even individual fingers on that figure, his nose, the badge on his hat, his bedroll, his various pouches, his little uh, entrenching tool right there. There's a lot of detail on this figure that you can paint if you want to and get some great looking figures. What we're gonna do is do a little bit of a painting guide, not just for the Russians of World War I in general, but also 10 millimeter in particular. So we're gonna be looking at this figure as our example, but pretty much all of our Russians with a couple of minor exceptions like Cossacks and uh, staff officers are gonna be painted in the same color. And that is starting with a fantastic color from the Vallejo range, khaki. I do not go anywhere without Vallejo khaki. The only thing I use more than that is the German camo beige, but because I want a little bit of green in this, we're gonna go with khaki. Now, I have primed these white so that I can have a relatively bright base coat to work up from. So you do need to make sure that you get into the crevices and you cover everything. You can go over and you can paint it everything with khaki. You can try to avoid the rifle. You can try to avoid the skin. It's not a big deal if you do though, because khaki is not a particularly dark color. So you can cover over it with flesh tone or with browns fairly easily. After this khaki, we'll go in and we'll hit some of the other colors, but to be perfectly honest, because this is a World One figure, we don't have a lot of colors going on here. Hence, we can paint up a lot of figures relatively quickly. I'll be right back after the khaki pass. Once we have the primary base color of khaki down, we can start working on some of the uniform bips and bobs. Now we're gonna start with anything that needs to be painted black, which is really just the boots in this Russian soldier. So I'm gonna go in, this is actually not black, this is Necromancer Cloak by Army Painter, but any very, very dark gray, almost black will work. You could of course take black and just mix a little white in. Um, the reason I would not go with black is black is very strong. You very rarely see pure black on a lot of things. Uh, and also if you go with pure black, then you cannot take advantage of the properties of a wash to shadow it down later on, which we are going to do so helps often to rotate the miniature to get into the various points. Because I primed the figure white, you do need to make sure that you get all the white areas, otherwise they will stand out. Um, after that, we're also gonna go in and we're going to take care of uh, the webbing on this Russian. Now I've seen, if you look in various pictures, I've seen leather, I've seen cloth, I've seen different colors. The most common I've seen is kind of a brown leather. So I'm gonna take monster brown and we're gonna go after the webbing. Now this is why I'm using a rather fine tip brush here. This is a, I don't know, it's a small brush. It says it's a size one, but sizes are kind of lies when it in brushes. Uh, one company size one is not another company's. So I'm gonna hit his bag. And you can see the strap of the bag that goes underneath his bedroll. So I'm gonna hit that. It is fairly subtle. You could skip it. If you wanted to, I like to do it, but maybe that says something about me. And then while I have this color, I'm also gonna go in and I'm gonna do the strap on his rifle. We're gonna come in and do the rifle in a different color once this dries. 
Moving forward, while there aren't a ton of accessories on these figures, there are some of them. One of those things that you'll commonly see on World War I or even World War II figures is the bedroll. On this figure, you can see the bedroll. Sometimes it's a great a uh, great coat, but in this case, I believe it is a bedroll, uh, wrapped around the shoulder of this figure. Now, for the Russians, the bedroll is often a similar khaki color, sometimes a little different, sometimes the same. It really depends, especially in the uh, early 20th century, a lot of dyes were not standardized, especially in less industrialized countries like Russia. And so what I'm going to do is, in order to add a little bit of visual interest it's not required, but I'm going to take my original khaki that I did my entire uniform in. I'm going to mix in a little bit of ivory. You could use white. You could use any off-white. You could use a very light gray if you want. If you have a lighter tan, you could just do that without, um, without having to uh, mix it yourself. And you can see it's similar, but a little bit lighter, and it's going to add some interest. And then later on, after we do a shade and a highlight, we'll go back in and we'll add this original color uh, this lighter color also to just again just help this this figure something to differentiate it i need to let this dry now because our next couple steps is we are going to hit the wooden parts of the rifle and then we're also going to go in and hit the skin tones which are all uh, bumping up against the blanket wrapped around him, so we do need to let this dry. Up next in the base coats are a couple of other accessories. Now, uh, first of all, we've got the rifle. Uh, not an accessory, but equipment. To differentiate the rifle from the rest of the browns that I have on here, which are more of a mid-tone desaturated monster brown, I'm using Army Painter's Fur Brown. It's got a little bit of red into it, and so it's going to give that rifle just a bit of color that the other browns that you see on these figures sometimes don't have. Um, with these small sculpts, you got to keep an eye out for sometimes where these rifles stick behind various areas around the back. And then it doesn't really matter if you hit the hands. I'm going to try to avoid them. But this is why I save the hands and the skin for last is because you're almost inevitably going to hit hands when you are putting brown on these rifles because all well, the hands are going over and around the rifle. Also, don't worry about getting it in areas which are going to be metal. We're going to do that as a later step. And the metal color that we're going to put on is going to be uh, quite dark. So we just don't need to worry so much about the coverage that is going to go over that reddish brown. The last piece of equipment that we're going to do is some of these figures have an entrenching tool. Now, as far as I can tell from photographs, the Russian entrenching tool covers were a bit of a medium to dark green. So I have gone with Army Painter's Army Green, which is a nice kind of generic military shaded green. Uh, and just dot a little bit on there. It really helps liven up the figure and give it a little bit of variety of coloring. Once this all dries, we'll go in and hit the skin. Now that we have all the equipment painted, our last step before the wash is going to be the skin. Now, what I've done is I've used a mix of Army Painter's Barbarian Flesh, which is their lighter skin tone. And I've actually mixed in a little bit of Alejo Basic Skin, which is even lighter, as you can see. And the reason I've done that is because, first of all, Vallejo tends to have better coverage. And I want to do this in one coat. But Basic Skin Tone is very light. Another reason I want to do this is because highlighting the skin at 10 millimeter is going to be very difficult. And so I want this wash to do all of the work. The wash that we're going to apply next, we want to apply this light base tone. The wash is going to go into those crevices and darken everything down except where it is at the highest point. And then we'll have this brighter skin tone showing through giving the illusion of depth. Now, it's inevitably going to be very difficult to get in, especially underneath the cap, without hitting parts of the model you've already painted. So make sure that you go back and you clean up anything that you hit with your flesh tone that you don't want to be flesh tone, and hit it with whatever colors that you've been using if you hit the wood of the rifle or if you hit the khaki of his uniform, go back and just clean that up before you go to our last step, which will be the wash. 
Now, short of choosing your base coat, your choice of wash is probably going to be the most important color choice you make for your figure. For these Russians, because there are a lot of soft earth tones, I've gone with a soft tone by Army Painter, probably comparable to Seraphin Sepia by Games Workshop. It's a sepia tone, and this is really going to help tint all of the uniform khaki colors, the little bit of light browns that we have on there, and also the skin tones in a pretty natural way go into those crevices, create natural shadows, or rather fake natural shadows. And then we can do li rather limited highlights with this shade doing the vast majority of the work. Now, one thing you do want to avoid is you do want to avoid too much puddling in certain areas because if it puddles, it's going to leave some really, really excessively dark spots. So for an example, right here above his bedroll or coat, I'm not 100% sure. I'm gonna wick some of that away. So we still have some of it in that crevice creating a shadow, but just not quite as much. This is something that you're just gonna to learn to feel through practice of the application of the shade, is how much shade you want pooling in these areas in order to give you the optimal amount of shadows. Because once it dries, obviously right now it looks very, very shiny. Once it shies, it's not going to be quite as shiny and we'll get a better idea of what it looks like then we can start picking up metallics and highlights now that our washer is dried you can see all the details have been nicely picked out on this figure thanks to the sculpt and the creases in the various cloth what we're going to do now is you could leave this as is but i want to brighten it up a little bit with some highlights so that the details really pop you can really see the arms the hat the knees things like that so I started by painting this with a khaki, uh, literally just khaki by Vallejo Model Color or any khaki you want. Now you could paint with khaki, but then it is going to lose, because you're painting with the same color, it, it's gonna look very samey. So I'm gonna go one shade brighter. You could mis mix khaki with a lighter color. I happen to have German Camo Beige, which is just a little bit brighter than khaki. And I'm gonna use that to highlight the uniform. Then for his bedroll, because I want to differentiate that from his uniform, I'm gonna take my German camo beige and I'm gonna mix in just a little bit of this mummy robe, a very light off-white. Um, you could just use white if you want, ivory, whatever colors you happen to have. We really wanna focus with the khaki, or rather the German camo beige. I really wanna focus on the areas that are facing the top with the miniature where the sun is going to be coming down. So areas like this elbow and the top of his upper arm, the front of his sleeve, you can see I left that crevice nice and dark. Here on his knee, just the very front of his knee because most of his leg is in shadow and then the side of his thigh here most of this sleeve here of his left arm is left exposed to the sun but we're going to still want to make sure that the crevices are left in the dark and then here on the back of his jacket of his tunic we can hit that we can hit this little epaulette here. For his hat, I tend to like to do the brim if the brim is the khaki color. Sometimes you see black rims on Russian hats. And then with the top of the hat, I could do the whole thing in a lighter color, but I think it looks a little bit, loses a little bit of detail there. So I'm just gonna do the edge. Now this is slow work, it's not necessary, especially if you're doing lots and lots of 10 millimeter figures, but this really is going to help him stand out from far away. Now I'm going to go into my German camo beige plus that little bit of mummy robe, you can see it's a lighter tan, I'm just going to hit the tops of the bedroll, the most exposed parts of the bedroll, 
not the whole thing, just to help contrast that against the rest of his uniform. We'll let that dry, and then we're going to come in and do the very last part, the metallics. With the highlights out of the way, now it's time to do the last base coat. The one we've left for last is the metal on the rifle, or occasionally they might have a bayonet. So I did, I'm doing this without a wash because when I use the brown wash, it's going to make the metal look dirty. I don't want it to look dirty. I want it to look not clean, but black instead of brown. So what I've done is I've mixed up a little bit of gunmetal, which is just kind of your dark bolt metal, um, with some steel, which is a very, very dark metal. It's a little hard to tell on camera. If you don't have steel, you can just mix up your dark metal color with a, just a touch of black until you get this dark metallic color. It's going to be very dark. And then you have to be careful here because we don't want to get this steel color anywhere except the top of the rifle and around where the actual end of the barrel is going to be. Now this particular model, the top of the rifle is a lot of it is hidden by his coat. So we don't need to get in there because I don't want to get any on that gray coat that he's got wrapped around. And I'm just going to put, if you can see a trigger guard, which sometimes in these views you can see, I'm just going to put like a little dab there to represent that there are some trigger guards there. I don't see any bolt pieces on this to hit. So really that's about all you need to do. I'm going to curve it on this side. You can see the coverage is not as good on the back side. Just a little bit of that dark gunmetal there. And that's it. We can really call this figure almost done. Um, I'm going to finish up the base. And uh, this, by the way, is a mix of uh, pre-mixed grout from Home Depot and also a little bit of water and a little bit of PVA glue to help make it easier to spread. And it also gives it that nice holy texture that I'm going to apply a, a light brown paint to and then uh, just a little bit of a dark wash and a little bit of flock. And we'll see how this looks. And with the basing and flocking out of the way, this figure is done. Now, while this was for 10 millimeter, uh, specifically a Pentrek in World War I Russian figure, you could really apply these techniques to almost any small scale um, historical miniature, especially a figure that's going to be mostly one color. The wash is going to do a lot of the work for you. If you wanted to skip the highlight stage, I would recommend experimenting with a slightly lighter color than the final uniform color you want to use, but the highlights really, I think, make it go a bit further in terms of readability and being able to see the various folds of the uniform and differentiate arms from other things. Um, same thing with the bedroll or coat that's wrapped around him. You want to make sure that even though in reality that may have been the same color as his actual uh, shirt, you want to make sure that's a different color or at least enough that it will read as a different color because otherwise it's going to blend in. Um, I brought in another example of some multi-based artillery figures so you can get an idea of you can the little dioramas you can make with these 10 millimeter figures on what is, I think, a 40 millimeter base. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these figures, these are actually going off to Leon at Pentraken and some more photos of the entire Russian World War I and Russian Civil War line should be available there in the near future. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. Have a good day and good luck with all your painting.